Welcome to the walkthrough for assignment two, part B in my CS5254 course in the summer of 2023. The objective of the second part of this assignment is to learn how to synchronize Java threads by our core synchronizers, including a recursive mutex, Java Rantrant lock, and a semaphore, which you'll implement using a Java Rantrant lock and a condition object. Videos describing the relevant Java synchronizers appear as follows for semaphore, Rantrant lock, and condition object. I recommend you watch these videos to ensure you understand these Java synchronizers. Naturally, we'll cover these topics in class as well. In this part of the assignment, you'll use a semaphore and a rantrant lock to enhance the executor service thread pool implementation of the Palantiri Simulator app from Assignment 2A. Assignment 2B focuses on the Palantiri Manager, which is used to restrict the number of beings from Middle Earth who can concurrently gaze into a fixed number of Palantiri. The Palantiri Simulator app is packaged as a project using the latest version of Android Studio. This app is written in both Kotlin and Java and demonstrates many Android capabilities. For the purposes of assignment 2B, however, you only need to be aware of the following three directories. The simulator manager's Palantiri Rentrant Lock Hash Map Simple Semaphore, which contains the skeletons you need to fill in, as described below. App Source Test, which is a set of unit tests that exercise many Palantiri simulator features and can be used to test the functionality you implement for this assignment. And finally, App Source Android Test, which is an Android Studio instrumentation test that runs your app automatically. You'll also need to integrate your solution for the executor service folder from assignment 2A into the latest and greatest executor service skeleton and use it as an implementation for the being manager for assignment 2B. Make sure you address all my comments on your assignment 2A solution before using this code as the basis for assignment 2B. To compile this code, you'll need to use the provided Android Studio project. You can run this project by clicking the green Run App button in the Android Studio IDE, which should automatically select an Android emulator to run, assuming you have one created. This app is designed to work with the Android API Level 33, so you'll need to select an emulator that uses API Level 33. If you don't have an emulator created, you can create it by clicking on the AVD Manager button in the Android Studio IDE. You'll need to modify several files containing the skeleton Java code by completing the To Do You Fill In Here tasks to provide a working solution. Don't change the overall structure of the skeleton, just fill in the To Do tasks and don't delete the To Do tags. In particular, you need to finish implementing the following To Do tasks with this assignment in the Rentrant Lock Hash Map Simple Semaphore folder, starting with simple semaphore.java, where you'll need to complete the to-do tasks in various methods to define a counting semaphore with fair semantics that are implemented using a Java Rentrant Lock and a condition object. You'll also have to implement the to-do tasks in the Rentrant Lock Hash Map Simple Semaphore Manager.java file, where various methods are used to implement a Palantiri Manager using an instance of your simple semaphore, a Rentrant Lock, and a Hash Map. If you're taking the class for graduate credit, you have to implement certain methods using the stream framework, as described further below. You'll also need to complete the to-do task in the student.kt file to set the type field to either graduate or undergraduate, depending on which version of the assignment you're implementing. Your app will be considered correct if it passes all the unit and instrumentation tests and all being successfully complete all their n iterations. A correct simulation should restrict the number of gazing beings to the number of Palantiri. In other words, if there are four Palantiri in the simulation, then only four beings should ever be gazing on the screen at a given time. When the simulation is running, the app view will display visual feedback to show Palantiri and being states, as well as the progress of their gazing iterations. If your assignment implementation is correct and doesn't throw any exceptions, then the app title bar labels will appear green when the simulation completes. However, if your solution is not implemented correctly or throws an exception, then red title bar labels will be displayed when the simulation completes. Graduate students or students taking the class for graduate credit must perform the following additional tasks. Enhance the Rentrant Lock Hash Map Simple Semaphore Manager.java file to use the Java Streams framework in several places. Undergrads are welcome to implement these Java functional programming enhancements, but it's not required. Skeleton code of this assignment is available in my GitHub account. Now that you've set up your GitLab account, you can pull this skeleton code into your repository, read it carefully, and complete the to-do markers. The additional work required by graduate students is clearly indicated. There are unit tests in the App Source test folder, which we provide to increase our confidence that your implementation is working as expected. It's essential that you use the Android Studio GUI to run these unit tests locally on your computer, as described here and shown later in this video. As usual, testing only demonstrates the presence of bugs, but not their absence, so don't rely solely on tests to detect problems in your code. In particular, I'll also provide videos that walk through frequently made mistakes that you should address. Please address these issues prior to your submissions to streamline our programming assignment review and assessment process. This part of the assignment is designed to get you familiar with synchronizing multi-threaded programs using core Java synchronizers that are more powerful than the spin locks we covered in assignment 1B. It doesn't require you to program any new 
Java, or Android concurrency frameworks, however. We'll be covering these in upcoming assignments. Now that we've walked through the specification, it's time to explore the skeletons. As you can see here, you go into the Managers folder under the Simulator folder, and there's a couple places to look. There's Beings and there's Palantiri. Uh, obviously, Beings is what you did for Assignment 2A, so make sure you copy your working solutions for Executor Service and Runnable Threads under Beings based on Assignments 1A and 2A. And then come down here to Palantiri, and of course, you should have your solutions for the SpinLock Hash Map Manager. Uh, solution from assignment 1B, just so you can have that available. But this time, we're going to focus on the reentrant lock hash map simple semaphore folder. And that's the one that we're going to see here. So we'll start looking at this in just a moment. Now that we've talked about the specification for this assignment, let's go ahead and look at the skeletons, starting with simple semaphore. This class defines a counting semaphore with fair semantics, and we use the Java Rentrant Locking Condition Object classes to implement this particular abstraction. There are three fields you have to implement to start with. First, you'll have to define a field that is used to keep track of the number of available permits. And make sure you properly qualify this field to ensure that its values are never cached when used by multiple threads. So if multiple threads read or write to it or update it and so on, you'd never want to have those changes be cached in the processor caches that should always go directly to main memory. So that's a big hint. Next, you go ahead and define a field that will be a lock used to protect the critical section and make sure that that's the lock type. Likewise, you want to define a condition field that's used to wait while the number of permits is zero or less. In this particular case, make sure you define this with the condition type. And those are the three fields you have to fill in. You don't have to worry about the simple semaphore default constructor that's provided for you. You will, however, have to implement the simple semaphore constructor that takes account of the number of permits. And here you'll have to go ahead and initialize the field that keeps track of the number of available permits. You'll have to initialize the lock, making sure that the lock you create is a rampant lock with so-called fair semantics. And you'll also have to create a condition using the rampant lock and its appropriate factor method that makes a condition associated with that lock. The first method you'll have to implement is the acquire method that actually does the protocol for semaphore. This will acquire one permit in a manner that can be interrupted. So you can see it can throw the interrupted exception. The way this works, of course, is you have to ensure that you acquire the lock, you lock the lock to make sure you're in a critical section, exclusively getting access to the internal state of this object. You'll then have some kind of a loop that's going to loop while the permit count is less than or equal to zero. And whenever it's less than or equal to zero, you're gonna go ahead and use the condition to wait. And when it wakes up, it'll come back around again and check to see whether or not the condition is to its liking. Once you make it past that guarded suspension check, then you can go ahead and decrement the count by one and make sure you release the lock on the way out in a manner that never fails, even if an exception occurs. Acquire interruptibly is similar to acquire, except the difference here is that you don't let this method be interrupted. So what you'll do is you'll do many of the same things. You'll acquire the lock. You'll have a loop that checks to make sure that you're going to have a permit count that's greater than zero. And if it's not, you'll wait. But in this case, you're going to catch any exceptions that occur, set a flag, and then loop back around again and keep doing this. You'll never break out of this loop as long as an exception, an interrupted exception occurs. So what'll finally happen, of course, is eventually you'll get through it uh, without being interrupted, and then you'll unlock the lock and make sure that you also set the interrupt flag. So you wanna make sure that if an interrupt has occurred and only if an interrupt has occurred, you'll set the interrupted flag and the interrupted status so that a caller knows that an interrupt occurred, even though it still managed to acquire the semaphore without it being interrupted. The next method you'll have to implement is release. And what you do here again is make sure you've got mutual exclusion by using your lock. Then you'll go ahead and increment the count. And if incrementing the count causes to go greater than zero, meaning that there is a possibility to let other waiting threads move or go ahead to acquire successfully, you'll then go ahead and, and signal the condition. 
As always, on your way out, make sure you release the lock. And then the final method here is just going to return the number of permits. If you set the qualifier on your field correctly, all you have to do is just return that value because it'll do an atomic read from memory and will not require any further synchronization. So that's an overview of the simple semaphore class. So that's the first thing you'll have to implement. Then you'll also have to come along here and you'll have to implement the rentrant lock hash map simple semaphore manager class, which extends Palantir manager. Uh, as you can see here, you're going to have to use your simple semaphore in order to limit concurrent access to the number of available Palantir that this Palantir manager manages. You'll also have to use a lock here, which is the lock interface. So you'll make a field there that's the lock interface. And then down here, you'll have to fill in some accessor methods to make the unit test work properly. And then you'll have to fill in the build model virtual constructor. And uh, as you can see here, you have to uh, a hash map is created for you. And then you'll have to go in and depending on whether you're using the grad version or the undergrad version as your implementation guide, you'll have to implement the right semantics. So you'll have to go ahead and create your semaphore using the semaphore, simple semaphore implementation that you provided given the appropriate number of permits, which of course is a function of the number of, of available Palantiri. And then you'll have to go ahead and initialize the rentrant lock and make the rentrant lock use unfair semantics. The rentrant lock that is used to protect the Palantiri manager can be unfair, whereas the rentrant lock that's used for the simple semaphore has to have fair semantics. So those are the initializations that you'll have to do. And uh, the grad students have to do the initialization using a Java sequential stream. Undergrads are free to use a sequential stream, but you don't have to. And we've talked about this in previous uh, frequently made mistakes videos. So go back and watch that and see how, how not to do it, which should give you a hint on how to do it. The acquire method is the one that's going to actually get a uh, Palantir from the Palantir manager blocking until one is available. This, of course, is going to use the simple semaphore that you define above in order to wait until you get access, until there's a Palantir that's available for you, a Palantir that's available for you. And then what you do here is you'll use the rentrant lock to guard access to the hash map. And the hash map logic should be very similar, if not identical, to the hash map logic that you did in assignment 1B. Uh, where the difference is that if you're a grad student, then you have to use a stream to do this. Whereas with undergrad students, you're free to use a stream, but you don't have to. You can just use the, the for each loop like you did before. Uh, as again, as we did before, make sure that you properly release your lock using the try finally idiom and make sure that you, uh, keep that, that semaphore acquired across the call to acquire. Down here is the release method. This is where you're going to give back the Palantir to the Palantir manager. As before, always do a sanity check to make sure you haven't got a null that's being passed back incorrectly. Make sure that you properly acquire the lock, as always, in this case, the rentrant lock. Make sure that you put the Palantir back into the hash map using either replace or put. Make sure that you check the return value to make sure it gave the right result. Store that in a Boolean. And then in the finally part of the try finally block, make sure that you go ahead and release the lock and then conditionally release the semaphore if everything worked properly when you put the Palantir back into it. So again, a lot of this code is very similar to assignment 1B. You just are using a uh, rentrant lock here and your simple semaphore instead of using a spin lock and the Java semaphore. And then finally implement the code that returns the number of available permits, which should be a no-brainer once you look carefully at your simple semaphore implementation. And that's basically the code walkthrough. Now that we've walked through the specification and looked at the skeletons, I'll show you how to run the unit tests. As always, click down into the tests folder and then essentially right-click on run tests in Java, and that will go ahead and open up the tests. As you can see, once they're built, they go ahead and run automatically. We have quite a number of tests at this point because we're running tests for the previous implementations as well. And as you can see here, uh, as it completes, as usual, we'll be testing to see how things work for assignment 1A, assignment 1B, 
assignment 2A and now assignment 2B. And if all goes well, as was the case here, everything should have a green check mark by it. You can see there's lots and lots and lots of tests. There's tests for the uh, simple semaphore, which you implement for this assignment. There's tests for the reentrant lock, hash map, simple semaphore manager, and a bunch of other tests as well, stress tests, normal tests, integrated tests, and so on and so forth. And so if, if all goes according to plan, everything should be green, and you'll get some sort of diagnostics printed out here indicating how things work and how long they take to run and so on. But the, the key thing is to ensure that when you're all done, you get a check mark and all the tests should pass. Make sure you run your tests. Please do not fail to run the tests. If you run the tests and you get errors, then you, of course, want to come and either try to fix them yourself or feel free to come to office hours. But I can't stress enough how important it is to run all those tests.